In this video, we're going to be walking through how you can configure custom settings with VS Code and just give a general overview of how those settings are enabled or disabled inside of VS Code. So I'm Jackson and this is David. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, first thing that we want to do is we've noticed that we have this mini map in VS Code once we pull it up and have some files. And sometimes that can be a little obtrusive. So the first thing we may want to do is disable that. And so the first thing that we need to do is jump into the settings to do that. So David, why don't you show us how to do that? Right. So when the minimap first came out, it was very frustrating because no one really knew what it was called. So we didn't even know how to turn it off. And uh, I personally don't like it because it does cover your code sometimes. It, it's just, it gets in the way, but it's like a mini version of your code. So um, to disable that we need to go into the visual studio code settings it's going to be different depending on whether you're on a mac or a windows computer if you're on a mac it is in code preferences settings and inside of here this is a json file and so you specify settings and values here uh, with what you want to do so jackson how do you know what exactly to put here yeah so the first thing you're going to want to realize and is that the default settings are also a JSON file. And you can see those in the left side there. So any settings that you can configure, VS Code has already given you some comments about what that setting is doing and how you're gonna access that setting in your personal user settings. So if I wanted to change, if I'm looking at the default settings and I wanted to change the font size from 12 to 14, then I would have to specify that editor.fontsize uh, property there in order to override the default settings. So looking at the user settings that are currently enabled, and look, I mean, we immediately get feedback of what that setting did if it was set correctly. Um, but if we wanted to change that minimap setting, we would just go into our user settings where it says editor.minimap.enabled and set that to false because we do not want to enable that. And then if we go back to that file, we'll be able to see that there is no minimap on that right hand side pane there. So if we go back to our user settings, just to kind of give you a little bit more of an overview, you know, if in the default settings, that's all of the settings available to personalize in VS Code. And there's a age old debate among developers when it comes to tabs versus spaces. And David, why don't you? Give us a little bit of an intro into that and why it may not be as much of a debate anymore as people like to think that it is. Right. Uh, so one thing about Visual Studio Code is that uh, by default, it actually, when you hit tab, it actually isn't inserting a traditional tab character. Uh, it's actually inserting spaces. And that default setting is called insert spaces. So right there. I just passed it. Yes, editor.insert spaces. And the default value is true. And so this developer debate on whether you know we should use tabs or spaces, I think as made famous by Silicon Valley. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's really, you know, a lot, I feel like a lot of people are thinking that we're saying we're hitting the space bar four times anytime we need to tab over. And that's simply not the case. Uh, so if you're using Visual Studio Code with the default settings, every time you hit tab, you are using spaces. <laughs> you're not using tabs. Uh, so that setting is right here, the default editor.insert spaces true. Now, if you work somewhere and they were very insistent that you do not do that, instead you use actual tabs, which are terrible in my opinion, you would, you would need to put a setting over here that says editor.insert spaces false. So, uh, when you're using insert spaces true, which is the default, how do you determine how many spaces there are? Well, that is a, another custom setting. I believe it's called tab size. Editor.tab size. And the default is four. But uh, let's say that our, we work for a company that had a style guide that said, you know what, uh, we want the tab size to be two spaces. Uh, so if I do that, now anytime I hit tab, the editor is going to hit the space bar twice. Uh, it's going to insert two spaces there uh, instead of the usual four. So that's just uh, an example of some settings that you can configure. Yeah. Just as a general overview really quick, um, you can already see that David was using that really handy search bar up at the top to find 
uh, settings that he was looking for with the insert spaces and tab size. Um, if you are looking at all of the default settings, VS Code will also allow you to collapse like the commonly used settings or those settings that are only specific to either the window or the editor. So, you know, if you're just getting started as a developer or you're just getting started with the VS Code, it's often a good idea just to take a look and see what's available to you out of the box. So as soon as you download VS Code. And another thing that's really helpful is the extension marketplace, which we will talk about in later videos and kind of give you some suggestions on some extensions that you'll need that are really helpful. But um, VS Code as a whole is a very useful tool and that's why we're spotlighting it in this video and why we wanted to show you how you can configure it and make it your own and make it so that your workflow as a developer is as smooth as it can be. So anything else to add? Yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, just to visually show you what he was talking about here, uh, by default, this commonly used section will be opened up. If you click on that, it collapses it, and then you can see all the other commands are categorized. So these are editor differences. Um, so you can just read through these comments, tell you what the setting does, uh, and the default value is here. And of course, if you wanted to change it, you would just need to type it over here. You can't make changes to this file and save them. So. Yeah. so that's it for this video. And if you liked it, then give us some feedback, either in a thumbs up or a comment, and check out other videos. And we'll catch you in the next one.